welcome here. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to the Browns preview show. This is me. John Costco is with me as always. And if you if you're here from watching the first video, please hit a like and subscribe on the channel. If you do so, make sure you check out the previous video where we talked about uh, the Cleveland Browns offense versus the uh, Chargers defense. This one, we're going to flip flop a little bit today. We get to the Chargers offense versus the Browns defense. And uh, this one got me a little scared. I ain't going to lie to you, uh, Costco. Uh, this is the first game the Browns are playing a bona fide quarterback. I mean, the first week, you got Baker Mayfield, who uh, right now looks like he's going to get benched any week. Uh, Joe Flacco was a quarterback where he was a backup, and they torched he, he torched you. Then you take a look at, at what, the, what you had this week, Marcus Mariota. And who am I forgetting in that one? Who am I forget? Oh, Mitch, he, Mitch Trubisky, who's now a backup. Yes. So you have all backup journeyman bums that you played the first four games and you're two and two. Now you get a real bona fide ball player coming in, throwing for 300 yards a game. Austin Eckler, Mike Williams. And I'm hoping Keenan Allen don't play. Uh, how do you see this, this matchup between the Browns defense and the Chargers offense? Yeah. So like. You talk, you, you hit the nail on the head here. So if you look at our power rankings at pff.com, we have, you know, we like the charges. We, um, they, they haven't really lived up to the billing so far this year. We actually have the currently the Browns ahead of them. I think from a full roster standpoint, they are better. But you talk about having a, you know, a quarterback advantage, and that's what wins you games. The, the Chargers absolutely have that. And one of the things that the Browns have had so far to, to date is the easiest schedule in the NFL, according to our numbers. And that moving forward, they have the second hardest schedule uh, remaining. So when that combination happens and you didn't go 4-0 and in those first four games with the easiest schedule, it's not looking good, especially against the level of quarterbacks that they played. You know, Baker Mayfield's grading as the worst quarterback in the NFL um, through through four games. Joe, we know what Joe Flacco is. He's just a bum. Um, there's no reason that they should have lost that game. Marcus Mariota is a guy that's just kind of like in, you know, he's kind of like the stop, stop gap guy. And so was Mitch Trubisky. So um, you finally get a quarterback that's now is worth assault. There's a little bit of a benefit for the Browns is that he's not a hundred percent. And so, and neither is the team, but you know, he still can make, make the big time throws. He can still sling it all over the place and you still have to, you know, respect that that arm of his so it's it's going to be a really tough test for for the browns uh, you know looking at the browns on the defense man i i good gracious i i, I took a look at some of these plays and these guys uh especially up front <laughs> they were getting wiped all the way across the field they couldn't get off blocks. Sometimes they would just come free and not make a tackle. It was just, I mean, right now, if you don't have Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney, not to mention, and, and, and I want to say this too, Taven Bryan is not a ball player. Stop mentioning him as a dude being out. Well, they got Taven Bryan out. Too. No, 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 no. No, please stop throwing him in that. He was getting starting reps. That doesn't mean he was, he was giving you starters plays. That guy, I, I I don't know why they people love him. He, you he, told me early. You compare him to Jordan Elliott and Tommy Toe, yeah, you'll love him. <laughs> 24. So, I mean, the, the, the difference in level of play that you've seen from, you know, him and the other two are, is, like, incredible. Like, Jordan Elliott has a 29.5 grade for the season. You know, Dayton Bryan has a double that grade. So, like, you're getting exponentially better play from Taven Bryan. So that's why t people like him. Because you, you just compare him to the guy he's starting next to, and it's like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. okay. So you're like, right. he's a 20, you're a 50-something. You're almost at 60. You, yeah. You're doing your thing, man. <laughs> Good gracious. Uh, yeah. If they don't have Clowney and Miles Garrett, this 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 is, uh, for me, I don't know what they're going to do. How are they going to manufacture pressure? Um, and, and it doesn't seem like uh, Joe Woods is, he's not changing. He doesn't, he's not going to just come out here and blitz. He, he's going to run what he runs, right? So how do they get pressure on Herbert? Um, I think you you have to change some things up. And I, I think uh, on the back end, you're going to have to play more man defense, which forces quarterbacks to hold on to it a little bit longer um, because then they have to find the open guy rather than saying, hey, they're in this zone. These are where the windows I'm going to have to throw at. When it comes to man, it's like, all right, you're picking the side. You're hoping your guy, you know, you got to go through your progressions there. You hope that you're able to 
to stop them uh, or to, you know, find open guys. So with the, the Browns, they've invested a lot of money in their, their secondary. They should be able to utilize that. Uh, so like, you know, obviously blitzing, you know, blitzing Herbert so far this year, you know, you do get a uh, lower, you know, 6% lower completion percentage. He has two of his, his two interceptions this year are when he has been blitzed. Um, so I think, you know, I think there is advantage that you can do there. His passer rating is, you know, 40 points lower when you do blitz him. So, you know, you, you have to adjust to what your personnel are. And if you don't have Miles and Clowney, who are the two highest graded Browns defenders, you're going to be, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, I think, I think you need to figure out how, a way to, to, you know, get pressure on Herbert. Cause when you do get pressure on him, even though going back to last year, you know, his, his passer rating drops to like 35 points. Um, you know, when you blitz him, it's not as dramatic for, you know, based on last year or whatever, but getting pressure onto him does affect him. And if you can, if you don't have your guys, you're going to have to manufacture that, whether or not that's like, you know, zone blitzing things, you know, being able to drop some defensive linemen out to, you know, cloud some quick with throw, uh, windows, you know, you know, have to switch it up. And I, I think the Browns, they don't, you know, Joe Woods has not shown that he likes to do that, but he, he might have to do that this week. Yeah, he might. He, uh, listen, I don't, I, I don't like using my credit card sometimes, but <laughs> sometimes it dictates that it needs to get done. You know, at the end of the day, um, let's talk about the secondary a little bit. Denzel Ward came back, got an interception. Um, you know that was he was playing a little more man coverage and he was playing closer. I'm glad that that we seen Denzel Ward a little closer to people. Maybe like he's at least in the screen. Now, when they when they get ready to go, how do, in general have you thought the secondary play? And then I guess the secondary question to that is, you know, there was a 42 yard play um, again where it looked like I don't know what people where people were at. Um, how have they been assignment wise from what you can see? I mean, for the most part, they've been pretty good. That play on that busted play on, uh, you know, the final drive against the Falcons that was on on John Johnson. Uh, they were in cover three and. There is no reason for him to not drive on the deep over there, um, which is obviously unfortunate because, you know, they they had that play dead in the water. So, um, you know, for the most part, they, they've been – that's the thing, too. For the most part, and, you know, he, they they even when they had their coverage bust in week one and week two, even in those games for, you know, 95% of the snaps, they're doing excellent job. And it's just the the – you can't have those mental gaps, especially in the situations that they had them. So I think with the the Browns defense, they the secondary, they generally do a really good job. And I, I think you saw that throughout the game against the Falcons. I mean, Mariota only completed what seven passes. Seven, in that game. right? I mean, you th- that's a good day in the for the secondary. They had one play out of you know the whole game where it was bad. Obviously, you can't have that when it you know in that situation, but it is you know, they were obviously really good up until that point. So I, you know, I, I think, I think on the whole, they were, they were really good. And this, especially against a, you know, talking about Drake London, who's a, you know, really big body wide receiver. I know he's just a rookie, but Kyle Pitts and he hasn't, he hasn't played, you know, like played out like he did as a rookie. I think, you know, obviously he's got like other worldly talent still. So like being able to shut down those two guys is, is a pretty good, um, I think pretty good t- order for the Browns defense. All right, let's get to some some defensive matchups and props and, and over under here. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and go with this over or under 15 and a half yards for Eckler's longest rush. Uh, I'm going to go over um, as it stands right now. If you're going to have your three quarters of your defensive line out, I think he's going to have a, a couple of big runs. If you have Clowney and Miles Garrett back out there, I would say under. Mm-hmm. I think they make a difference. Over maybe. under 42 and a half yards for Herbert's longest completion. That's a tough over. one. Over. Okay. I, over. I mean, you, you, he's a guy that, so he doesn't, he doesn't stretch the field as much as he should, you know, with a guy with a, with the arm he has. But the thing is, is that they always tend to have like a couple just like big, plays a game like not if you know maybe just won a game but they just always tend to have like these just big shot plays and he's really good with it and you got mike williams you're putting it up for him and i think he's gonna get one or two i got over on that one too they put it up last year they i think they had a lot of i think they had three long plays last year i mean they got like half 50 or something one uh, one one i remember was against aj green which was a 
missed missed offensive pass interference call, which yeah, is, yep. you know, a, kind of a big game changer. Uh, over under one and a half team sacks for the Browns. Well, if Miles and Clowney are playing, I'm saying over. Um, that's for sure. But if they're not, that's under. It, it all de- that all depends on on if those guys are playing on health. Uh, I got under. I, listen, I'm assuming I'm going to assume going to this game that they're not going to play. Um, they haven't practiced. I haven't seen them do anything. Uh, I'm gonna go under. Uh, they look. They, they lucky to get one sack. Uh, especially the way they, you know, played against the Falcons. So I'm going to say uh, under. Uh, over or under a half tackle for loss for Phillips? Uh, I'm going to go over. Um, I think he, I think he can, he's fast enough. He can knife in through a, an open gap and make a play once. <laughs> I got under. I feel like, I feel like he, George, JOK might do that, but I don't feel like he's just going to do that. If Clowney and the rest of them was there, possibly, but not with that uh, D-line. And then, oh, let's finish it. Over, under, seven and a half tackles for Jacob Phillips. I'm going to go under. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had seven in this past game. Yeah. I think it was seven he had in this past game, but I'm going to I'm gonna go under. Um, there might be more opportunities to make plays, though, in this game, I would say. I, I would say that, like, especially in coverage-wise. So, like, you know, you only, you only complete seven passes in coverage is, like, how many opportunities do you got, have to make a yeah. tackle, right? So, yeah. Maybe I'll go over it just because of the fact that you might get some more opportunities for tackles. I'm going to go over and tackles. So like tackles thing for me, isn't a, a, it's not an indication of quality of play for all the people that understand, you know, know what yeah. that is just because you racked up 15 tackles in a game. What if they're all 10 yards down? The field? Right. What <laughs> if they're on screen plays and you got blocked, you just <laughs> right. like that don't count, bro. So I got him at under anyway. I'm like, mm, I don't think you're going to get that many tackles. And like you said, they may throw the ball a lot. But check this out. On Friday, we'll be dropping our keys to victory for the Cleveland Browns against the Chargers. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the offensive uh, spotlight that we did uh, on Wednesday. Make sure you, you check this one out. And then make sure you check the one out on Friday. Uh, with all that being said for G. Bush, John Costco, this is the Browns preview on the Barbershop Network.